In Machu Picchu did Pachacotec a stately pleasure dome decree where Urubamba, the sacred river, ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round. And there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree. And here were forests ancient as the hills enfolding sunny spots of greenery. This is Machu Picchu. It means ancient mountain in Quechua, the language of the Incas. The Inca emperor Pachacutec started building it in 1450 CE. The first Inca emperor Manco Capac ruled the Andean peoples from 1200 CE. Under Pachacutec, who was the ninth Inca emperor, the empire reached its highest glory. It covered most of Peru and Ecuador and had parts of Colombia, Bolivia, Chile and Argentina. It united many tribes such as the Moche, the Chimu, the Tawanaku, the Nazca, known for the line figures on the desert. Cusco, the capital city, was called Cusco, which means navel in Quechua. Four regions, or Suyu, spread out of the navel. The empire was thus Tawantinsuyu, meaning the four regions. Radiating out of Cusco were pilgrim paths, or seques. On each path lay several sacred sites called huacas. They had each a geographical feature endowed with divinity. Pilgrims made their offerings, stayed in communal inns, then continued their journey to the next huaca. On the day of the winter solstice, June 21st, they gathered in Cusco and worshipped the sun god, Inti. Thus began the planting season. This huaca is called Tambo Machai. A fountain is its sacred feature. Sources of water were kept secret to prevent enemy capture. For this reason, builders of fountains were killed after the construction. This huaca, the Puka Pukara, has a natural rock as foundation over which a temple was built. Any sacred precinct begins with a double jam door, symbolic of dualism and complementarity. Houses have a pair of bulls on their rooftops all over Peru. The temples and quarters of noblemen are constructed with polished limestone. They are placed so perfectly no mortar is used. This is called the imperial Inca style. In contrast, the houses for commoners have mortar made of mud, stone, grass and cactus glue. This waka is dedicated to the earth goddess, Pachamama. The cave represents her womb, which needs to be kept fertile. Grains and the rare black liamas are sacrificed on the altar. Three polished steps are placed in sanctums. They represent the three levels of the Andean people's cosmology, sky, earth, inner world. Each level has a guardian, the condor for the sky, the puma for the earth, the snake for the inner or underworld. The Andean people worshipped many gods. Viracocha was the first god and creator of all. They had nature gods such as the sky, earth, sun, moon, thunder, lightning, rainbow. Modern Cusco has adopted the rainbow for its flag. In a huaca close to Cusco called Saksai Huaman, there is a zigzag shaped wall of massive boulders. It represents the lightning. The site also has a sun gate, Intipunku. The Inca were well versed in astronomy.
they had a solar calendar and one that was a combination of the moon and stars. The details are lost in time because the Inca did not have a writing system. They had an accounting system though with knotted strings called a quipu. A lot of their lifestyle and festivities are derived from their pottery. Now, artists paint on gourds in the same style. The Inca accepted all gods and made niches for them in their temples. But they chose Enti, the sun, as their primary god. The emperor was the son of Enti. At the highest point of Machu Picchu is a sundial called Intiwatana. It is cut out of the bedrock and may have been an altar and perhaps the emperor's seat. Another altar is enclosed by an oval wall. This is the sun temple with two windows facing the two solstices. A plumb line hanging from the window casts a shadow on the altar that can be measured to predict seasons. The emperor and high priest's chambers are next to the sun temple built in the imperial Inca style. The water temple has a series of water channels. The source of the water is the mountain called Machu Picchu. A natural rock formation of wings and a carved bird's head make up the Kondo temple. Pachamama's grotto and sacred steps are below the water temple. A level below the main complex are the houses and factories for the 300 or so inhabitants. Bone studies from burial grounds indicate that people from all over the Inca Empire were brought here. Llama bone weaving tools were found. Tin and silver figurines used for ritual offerings were being crafted here. Beer vessels, pottery and utensils for large feasts were unearthed. The area overlooking the site with the guard's house was the festival ground. Acres of terraced cultivation spread downhill. A nursery in the center is still maintained to grow saplings. It has the coca plant whose leaves are chewed for its high nutritious value. It also keeps one from being hungry or thirsty, which is very useful for farmers out in the field. Now, as the greatest of Inca emperors, Pachacutec, looks towards his palace, he sees a cathedral. Cusco resembles a Spanish town with its many churches and Spanish-speaking natives. It happened in the year 1532, during the 14th Inca emperor's reign. A Spanish conquistador, Francisco Pizarro, sailed from Spain with a handful of men. With their guns, they captured the king. As ransom, they were given a room full of gold and two of silver. They killed the king anyway. The Inca retreated to the jungle and set up a new capital. They called Vilcabamba. The inhabitants of Machu Picchu also retreated with them. On the way, they burnt all the trails that went up to Machu Picchu. 36 years of battle followed. A lot of the natives died of the European disease, smallpox. 
the Incas were defeated, but the Spanish never found out about Machu Picchu. It was the only place that remained pristine. Inca religious festivals were modified to resemble Christianity. For example, they used to carry mummies of their ancestors in processions around town. It became the Corpus Christi procession where an icon of Christ is taken around. The cathedral has a last supper painting with Andean food on the table, a roasted guinea pig and papaya. Now, the population is all mestizo, which means of mixed blood. In 1824, Peru became independent, thanks to the South American Liberation Wars led by José de San Martín and Simón Bolívar. In 1911, an American explorer, Hiram Bingham, came to Peru to look for the lost city of the Incas, Vilcabamba. Local farmers who cultivated the terraces around Machu Picchu took him there. He was fascinated. The next year he returned with a National Geographic crew and a team of scientists. The publicity made Machu Picchu a wonder of the ancient world and now a premier tourist destination. As for the artifacts such as pottery, ritual paraphernalia, skeletons, these Hiram Brigham brought back to his university, Yale University in the United States. A hundred years later, after much negotiation, the Peruvian government recovered some of them. These are now in a museum in Cusco. Cusco lies on a fault line, which means earthquakes are common. The colonial buildings collapse, but the Inca walls remain intact. Sometimes a collapsed building exposes an Inca structure under it. This is what happened to the Dominican church in 1950. A huge hall constructed in imperial Inca style came to light. Old Spanish accounts said the walls of this chamber were plated in gold. This was called Coricancha, which means gold house. And this was where all the pilgrim paths met in Cusco. At this sun temple, now, the Coricancha is a museum. Some Spanish murals that were painted over the stone walls have been retained. Aspects of Inca culture are displayed here, such as astronomy. The Incas imagined constellations by joining the dark spots between the stars. This image of the summer sky has a snake, a toad, a partridge, a llama with baby, a fox, and a shepherd. The Milky Way galaxy was called Vilcamayu, which means celestial river. Its earthly counterpart is the Urubamba River. It winds around the cities of the Sacred Valley, which are Pisac, Urubamba, and Ollantaytambo. Each of these have Inca constructions. Here is the Sun Temple at Ollantay Tambo, on the hill, shaped as a seated llama. The Incas were very good engineers. The terrace walls have layers of stone and sand to retain water and the topsoil. The Inca road system runs like a spine on the Andes mountain range. It is 40,000 kilometers long and now 
It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A portion of this road is the pilgrim path that connects Machu Picchu to Cusco. The Inca Trail hike, starting from Ulian Taitambo, is 45 kilometers long and takes three and a half days. It goes up and down several peaks and passes through a few Inca sites. There is an easy route too. Take a train from Olian Taitambo to the Machu Picchu Pueblo. On the way, the glacier Veronica can be seen. This pueblo has a natural hot water pool, bridges over the Urubamba with locks left by amorous couples, and some interesting sculpture. The bus ride to Machu Picchu takes 30 minutes. It is very windy and offers magnificent views. In Machu Picchu, one can hike to the sun gate from where the summer sun first strikes the site. Another hike takes one to the Inca bridge. It is made of a few logs straddling a deep gorge. Here is a picture taken by Hiram Bingham of a similar bridge over the Urubamba. The woolen textile industry is very big in Peru. The weaving technique is pre-Inca. The process starts with the sheep and the llama and the llama family, alpaca, vicuña and guanaco. The animals are shorn four times a year. When a baby alpaca is shorn for the first time, its fleece is extremely soft. Clothes and quilts made of baby alpaca are the most expensive. A root grown in the Andes is used as detergent to wash the wool. Next comes the thread making process. A drop spindle technique is used to make yarn from the fiber. Then comes the dyeing process. An insect is the base material. It is called cochineal and is a cactus parasite. By mixing different substances to cochineal, various colors are obtained. Cochineal's natural color is red. This explains why the Andean people's clothes have so many shades of red. Now, the weaving can begin. Threads are arranged around a pole. A llama bone instrument is used to pass the thread back and forth and tighten the woven cloth. It takes a weaver six to eight hours to weave a shawl. The last step is to tie the edges. The men in this community cultivate terraces and work as porters on the Inca trail. They carry fuel, food, luggage, bedding and the tents. Every day, 200 hikers are allowed to enter the trail and for them, 300 porters are needed. Even 60-year-old men can be porters. The mountain folk have larger lungs and more red blood cells than people from the plains. In the local market in Cusco, we see a strange sight. Dried baby alpacas hanging for sale. We are told these are from natural miscarriages. They are used in traditional rituals. The potato's original home is the Andes. Some 4,000 varieties of potatoes are cultivated here and 55 varieties of corn of various colors. Along with rice, these are the staples of the Andean diet. A red corn beer is very popular. It is called chicha and is supposed to be good for the prostrate gland, just the excuse needed by men. When the beer is ready to be served, bars hang out a pole with a red plastic bag at its end, like a flag. 
Guinea pig is a delicacy reserved for special occasions. An herb is stuffed in the stomach and the creatures are roasted slowly. Deep-fried pork skin called pork crackling is a roadside snack. Cheese and bread making came with the Europeans. But this round bread is an Inca adaptation. The Andean soil is very rich. Most tropical fruits grow here. This region is the breadbasket of Peru. Many kinds of grain are cultivated, including the protein-rich quinoa. Cocoa is a cash crop here. There is a chocolate museum that teaches chocolate making. Even a casual visitor can learn how the beans go through the process of roasting, winnowing, grinding, pressing, refining, tempering, and finally molding. Various flavors of chocolate are made here, including a chili flavor. Liqueurs of chocolate mixed with different fruits can be sampled. The cocoa shell tea is rich in antioxidants and tastes pretty good too. This is a Peruvian hairless dog, an expensive breed. He needs a jacket just like us. These sculptures are part of the Chubby Women series of a contemporary Chinese sculptor. The exhibition travels around the world as a token of international cooperation in art. Cusco has two seasons, the sunny and the rainy.
Oh, 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 oh,